Okay, people. So what I'm doing in this video is just quickly going to take you through uh, this thing that's called your formula sheet. It comes with the course, and um, in this case, it's talking about volumes, okay? Now, you've probably done volumes in the past, so I'm just going to quickly go over this again, okay? We'll look at each one, but we'll be quick. All right, so here we have a rectangular prism right here. This rectangular prism is, in other words, a box. If you go length times width times height, you're going to figure out the volume of that box. The area, or the amount of liquid or air that could fit inside the box, okay? Over here, at the volume formula section, there's two options, okay? There's one option, and there's the other. Either one works, but it's just another way of doing the same thing. What you do with the first one here is you take the area of the base. Well, the base in this case, you can call whatever you want on a box your base. It's whatever side you're setting down on the ground, I guess. That's probably the easiest way to think of it. So you take the area of the base, and it's a rectangle, although it doesn't look like a rectangle here, it really is. Go length times the width, okay? Length times width, just like you did way back when. But instead of just length times width, we're going to see how many of these stack on top of each other. So we're going to times it by the height. Okay? And a quick way to do this, if you don't want to do that version, you just go length times width times height. Remember, if there's no symbol between these, it just means times. Okay? Next one below is a triangular prism. Now when you look at the formula for the triangular prism, it says area of base times the height, and then you divide by 2. Well, do not call this your base. The reason why is this base is the same kind of base as our rectangular prism up here. You would get the wrong answer if you called this your base. So if I could, I would just show you how you flip this up on its side so you're sitting on one of the triangles and we'll call, you know, we'll call this call this your base or the other side, it doesn't really matter. Okay? What do you do? You find the area. Well, remember the area of a triangle from the last unit? You just go base times height, so base times height and then you divide by 2. Okay, but for the volume of this thing, you would have to take that answer, so base times height divided by 2, and you'd have to times it by how tall it is. Okay, well, there's a formula down here. It just says, in this case, if you knew the length, the width, and the height, if you multiplied them all together, then divided by 2, you would quickly have the volume for a triangular prism. Okay? You can quickly use this video if you want to, and as you go through your questions, you can just say, I'm going to fast forward to whatever shape you're looking at. Okay, the next one's a square-based pyramid. Again, this one is a square base, so you're just going to go, and this is the base, so take the length and times it by the length. And remember, if this is 5, this is also going to be 5, because it's a square. So you just go 5 times 5, for example, and then you would times it by the height. And you wouldn't be quite done from there. You would, because length times length times height gives you a box. We don't want a box. We want a pyramid. So the cool thing about pyramids, as we'll discuss in the next uh, lesson on video, is you have to divide by 3 whenever you have a pointy top, or whenever you have a pyramid. Okay, a pyramid, or even a cone for that matter, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, so let's go to the next set of shapes. Here we have a cylinder very common shape that we see in real life all the time. You find the area of the base. Now remember the area of the base is a circle. Do you remember the formula for the area of a base? It's pi r squared. So over here in the formula you can see they have pi r squared. Find the area of the base and then see how many of those, pretend it's a CD, see how many CDs would stack on top of each other to get to the top. And that that is called the height. So you go 3.14. Remember, pi is 3.14, in case you forget. That looks like a 7, I'm sorry. Uh, 3.14 is, is what pi is. Okay, just so you remember. 3.14 times the radius. Remember, the radius is this distance from the belly button of the circle to the outside. And then square it. That means times it by itself. So if this was a 2, you'd go 2 times 2 and then times it by the height. Maybe the height's 10. Okay, so you'd go 3.14 times 2 times 2 times 10. Done. That's the volume of this shape, which is called a cylinder. All right, the next one's called a cone. The cone and the cylinder are very similar. The formulas are almost identical. Okay, look over here. This is probably the easiest way. 
you go you do the same thing we just did for the the cylinder except when you're done you divide by three we'll talk a little bit about that we'll do some examples with that in the next uh, video okay and the last thing we have here on your formula sheet is a sphere a sphere is pretty cool it's basically like a ball or the earth or the moon or whatever you want to talk about whatever it is that's round and looks like a ball to find the volume inside what I'll just mention this what you would do on your calculator is you would go and you can use either of these I'm just showing you this one because it seems a little bit more straightforward just go 4 times 3.14 times by the radius let's say the radius was 5 right here so you'd go 4 times 3.14 times 5 times 5 times 5 push the equal button then divide by 3 and you will come up with the volume of a sphere okay so I hope you caught something out of all this feel free to rewind or fast forward or whatever you need to do to get to the shape that you would like a little explanation on okay uh, good luck we'll move on to some examples in the next lesson